What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So CSS, the has pseudo class, and also the not pseudo class. I'm going to show you exactly how to use these future CSS elements here today in this video. And if you are on Mac, then you're using Safari and you can actually use it with the latest version of Safari. However, if you're on Windows, I'm going to show you how you can actually use it, but it does involve downloading a Google Chrome dev browser and also uh, enabling the experimental web features flag. I'll show you exactly how to use that. Um, of course, at the time of, of uploading this, that's the current state of the situation. But if you're watching this in the future, I'll show you also how to use a cool site called Can I Use to see if you can use it right now on your regular browser. So today I'm going to show you exactly um, a few different use cases for both has and not in the context of a simple project. All right, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the the coupon code UI2022 and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so if you're watching this, I want you to check out caniuse.com forward slash CSS hyphen has and it's going to let us know currently um, what browsers allow this to run. Now you can see if we look at Chrome and you're on Windows, by the way, if you're on Safari, you can use the latest version. Uh, it'll be Safari, uh, it'll be supported at this point. Um, however, if you're on Windows, we can see currently, in my case, uh, there's a little flag right here in Chrome. Uh, if, you're on, if you only use Firefox, you're SOL, uh, so forget about that, but Chrome, um, right here, it is. Uh, it can be enabled via the experimental web platform feature, and also um, Chrome version 101-102. So if you type in um, Google Chrome Dev Tools, uh, you could just download that and install it, and then make sure you actually run it. Uh, you hit your Windows key and just type uh, Google. You'll see Google Chrome Dev. It's uh, right here actually, and. Um, after that, you'll have to go to, um, let's go to my Chrome dev, there it is. Um, type in Chrome flags right there. All right, and then right there, um, type in experimental web, and you should see this option right here, and just choose enabled. And then that it that way it should work. Now I did run into an issue when I was using live server. Um, it actually wasn't loading anything. It was not loading any web pages. So I had to go to incognito. <laughs> so it's like this massive process just to try to demonstrate this um, impending upcoming uh, element called has and not as well. All right. So after that, um, I'm going to go here to Visual Studio Code, and I already have some quick boilerplate to hit exclamation point enter to get that, but also link this element right here. Um, I've created a folder called CSS. Inside of it, we have main.sass, so I'm watching that with the live SAS uh, compiler. So if we just type in live SAS, I think that's in here, yep, right there. And also live server, you're gonna want that installed as well. Um, so I right clicked, open with live server. Now, however, it's gonna open up your default browser. You wanna make sure that you copy and paste the URL into the actual dev um, version of Chrome for this to work. Okay, enough rambling. So I'm gonna go through the HTML real fast. In fact, because it's not really the, the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just gonna paste in some things. Um, we're gonna have three different cards and I'm going to make it simply an adjustment on one of them. So first of all, we're gonna have a container that holds all three. We're gonna put them in three columns and I have right here a card. So inside a card, we have um, this uh, paragraph here, a standard $29, a description, and then a buy standard uh, option right there. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it two more times, but we're gonna make it a slight adjustment. Um, so for title right here, we're gonna change this to premium, all right? And also, we're gonna add an element as well uh, called popular. So in fact, I'm just gonna kind of paste this in right here. 
Uh, and so this is, this is gonna be one of the demonstrations um, for using has. Uh, does it have popular, et cetera, and also not. Um, and then that's the only thing that we're going to change about you know this this stuff right here. Now I did kind of um, already, um, I created all this kind of like mostly, for the most part it's already custom. So I'm just gonna paste that in. I just wanted to quickly describe it. SAS, all right, let's get to the CSS. Now of course we have basic boilerplate CSS. So we have the body, display grid, place content center, just to get uh, all those cards centered. Um, in the middle, background right here in a font family new need to already have that installed. Um, we're gonna take our container, display flex, give it a gap of one M unit. So that's gonna uh, give a white space between uh, each column right here. And I'm setting a max width as well. Um, we're also gonna have our cards. So we're styling our cards as well. And let me just Close that up. So simple, you know, just giving the background a white border radius padding text align center. Um, we are also going to style our text elements. Nothing pertinent to the purpose of the tutorial is happening yet. We're just styling stuff. All right. Uh, we have our description, just centering stuff up. We also have a, a big rule set for button styling. Always fun right there. And then also our popular element right here. So now if we save this and we go back to Chrome Dev, this is what we should have by default without utilizing any of the has uh, CSS property. So uh, CSS selectors rather. So um, a couple changes I would wanna make is I want this middle card to be a little bit bigger than the other ones in order to emphasize it and also have a stroke around it and I also want the button to be styled differently from these other two, all right? So the whole purpose, you know, you've probably seen this before in price comparison charts and stuff. You really wanna emphasize as much as possible the, the one of the elements, okay? Or one of the choices essentially. And so that's a great use case. One of the many, one of the several use cases at least for using has and not as well. All right, so to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the has and we're gonna, just gonna come out here we're gonna say card has, and we're gonna say premium. All right, so this is saying if our card element right here, this one, you know, these three elements, if it has an element with the class of premium, then do something. And we could see in this case, it's right here. All right, the only element that has premium is within this particular card, all right? So what we can do now is we could say, border, three pixels solid, and then I'm gonna give it a specific color code of 162, it's 255, it's just like a basically a blue color. So this applies the border not onto premium, but rather the card itself, all right? So let's see if that actually worked. Better, yes, there we go. So now we've been able to, uh, sort of like in a programmatic way, determine or make a styling, a CSS change essentially, um, based on whether or not a CSS class exists inside of uh, the DOM or within that particular selector. All right, very, very cool. So we can do a bunch of other stuff. I only, I'm only gonna do one more property, but we can just also say transform scale 1.1. All right, so that's gonna make it a little bit larger, just like that. Awesome. So now, additionally, we can also use not in conjunction with has. So for instance, if we wanna change uh, these color, th these buttons right here, and we wanna take it so that these call to actions don't, I guess, I, I would say, compete for priority uh, based on this one, or in other words, visual hierarchy. We want this one to stick out the most, and these ones, not so much. All right, so we'll do that in a couple different ways. So what we'll do is say card, not, has p popular and then we want to style the links a all right so kind of a lot happening here so we're going to say first of all we're essentially saying it's 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 a the opposite it's almost like this like if you have a, a property um if we go like this and then blah equals whatever then saying if not so this is the same thing with this it's just doing the opposite. So if it doesn't have P 
paragraph popular, which is right here, and this is the only element, this is the only card that uh, actually has it, then do something to the A element right here. All right, so those, are the, those two don't have popular, therefore we're gonna adjust this. So inside of here, we're gonna say color black, and then the background, we're gonna put 213, 221, and 235. So if we save that, you're gonna see that they don't compete for as much attention to the eye because we've made them, the, back, the background of the button, uh, a lot less contrast compared to the background, the white background on which it's sitting. And we just also, uh, to make sure for readability, we change the text or the color to black. Okay, so you can do that same thing again. Let's say for instance, you think there's too much white space down here underneath these because this right here doesn't exist up here to push it down, well, we can add margin or padding depending. Yeah, we're gonna add a margin top. So same thing, card not has popular. And then we wanna uh, take our P price and add margin top 0.5 M units. So again, price occurs right here and we're just gonna push uh, itself away or down essentially from the title. And that's gonna help this situation right here where we now have a pretty good equal amount of white space from the top and bottom. And that is it. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Check out designcourse.com and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.